Yeah, we are the biggest coal port in the United States, and nobody else is close. We export more coal from Hampton Roads than all the rest of the coal ports combined. China and India are really demanding more and more coal. Uh, we may be exporting environmental problems to them, but it's very profitable right now. And so it's a good deal for us. That's one of the reasons why I would suspect our port is going to do pretty well because, you know, that Lambert's Point coal terminal, it's going full blast right now. Uh, natural gas right now is inexpensive and is a really uh, more efficient uh, fuel in many ways than, than coal, but it's a matter of being able to convert uh, energy sources to natural gas and also some of the things that uh, the Chinese want to use uh, energy for, they can't use natural gas for. but. Here in the United States, I would expect to see not just more homes, but automobiles and trucks and everything else run on natural gas in the future because we've discovered lots of new sources and the price has gone down and it's the most efficient fuel relatively right now. You want to say it again now? Um, effectively, QE2 ends June 30th of this year. So I was asking, do you expect an increase in inflation and in, in that respect, mortgage rates as well, since it's only a few months away? Yeah, the, the Fed has been keeping mortgage rates and interest rates and everything artificially low. And that's probably going to come to an end. Uh, I would expect to see, as a consequence, yes, rising mortgage rates. And, uh, you know, it's... It's virtually inevitable because lots of things have been distorted by what the Fed has been doing. Um, and uh, as mortgage rates rise and interest rates rise, uh, that's not going to be good for the housing market, I'm sorry to say. And I, I think the Fed is going to ease away from what it's been doing. The talk about the uh, credit rating and, and again, the vote coming up on the debt ceiling. What do you really see as that, and is that, what's going to happen in that regard? Well, I think that uh, eventually there will be a grand bargain struck in Washington that's going to involve cuts in spending and uh, some tax increases. Uh, and the best sign that it's probably a doable thing is that both sides won't like it. Uh, <laughs> but. We can't continue to run $1 trillion deficits year after year after year. Uh, you can go over and look at what's happening in Greece and Portugal and Spain now and say, we're only a couple of years away from that if we continue our current behavior. Uh, so uh, eventually I think there will be a deal done and maybe the gang of six that you've probably read about, the you know, three Republicans, three Democrats. But it isn't going to be something that lots of the partisans on each side like. Uh, but it's probably going to be necessary. 